Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the ever-recognizable ORG350 by Big Dubs. Now, at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and get this right out of the way at the beginning of the video. This truck is fully console-friendly, but as of recording this video, it has not yet been approved for consoles. So, you can follow the link in the description box below to check out the mod.io page for this truck, and you can subscribe to it on PC right now. It's fully public on PC right now. However, in order for it to actually be on console, consoles it needs to be approved by the devs which like I said before as of the time of recording this video it has not yet been approved but once it does get approved I will update this video uh th this comment section with a pinned comment letting you guys know that it has been approved so with that being said let's go ahead and check out all the features of this truck now this is of course based off of a bullnose Ford and obviously it is a very 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 long wheelbase truck quad cab, long bed, this thing is pretty much your, it's really a work truck, but it also can very easily be an adventure truck as well. So let's fire it up, take it into the garage, and see what kind of customizations we have, because there are a lot, like there are so many, for example, tires, oh my god, there are so many tires. Now I know that some of you have potentially seen this truck on some of my live streams before, but in this video we'll be going more in depth and more in detail than we ever have in the streams. So let's go ahead and go into the engine options. Now you start with the 6.9 liter IDI, then to the 6.9 liter Shade Tree, then the 6.9 liter Shop Tune, then the 7.3 IDI Factory, 7.3 Pro Tune, 7.3 Shade Tree, and 7.3 Buzz Toe Tune. Now this is, this is an interesting one because this is basically a further improved version of of the 7.3 Pro Tune, specifically intended to be used with the 10-speed transmission. So we're going to start with the Pro Tune, and then we're going to go with the... There's actually a lot, like I said, a lot of gearbox options. you got the C6 Hauler 10-speed Tune, Hauler Tune, Low Tune, Open Range, and Balance. So again, a lot of different options. So I'm actually going to go with the 10-speed, and then... I'm going to actually go back and go with the Buzz Toe Tune. So I kind of go back and forth between those two sometimes, but I definitely want to try that combination together because they are, like I said before, intended to be used with each other. Now, suspension-wise, again, a lot of options. You have active high lift. You then have active standard lift, 3-inch lift, lifted high hauling 3-inch. And then you have 6-inch lift, lifted high hauling 6-inch, then active hauling, then stock ride, and then stock hauling. So my personal favorite is lifted high hauling six inch. And so that really gives you all the clearance you're gonna need for all of the various tire options, but it also allows you to have the stiffer rear suspension to haul trailers. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on. And here's where it gets really, really incredible because the tire selection list is huge. Now in all-terrain, you have these, well, it's actually interesting because under the all-terrain category, you have these BFG mud terrains, but they're not necessarily like an all-terrain compound. It's weird. It, the categorization system doesn't actually always go along with the tread compound type. So we've got these mud trains, mud train duels, and it really just goes up in size from there, starting at 31, and then you have a variety of selections going all the way up to 35, 36, 37, 38. The KO2s look really, really good on this thing, by the way. I highly recommend running them if you want to have a really good, like, realistic-looking build. Then you're going to go up to a 39, then a 41, then a 43, all the way up to a 43 in a KO2 if you so desire. Then, once you get into the off-road category, you get what it actually spawns in with from the beginning, which is a 29-inch Super Swamper TSL. And then you can go up from there to a Cobalt Nitto Ridge Grappler, which the Ridge Grapplers are odd because it says this is a 31, but this bogger also says it's a 31. So it's kind of a weird back and forth between the sizes. Some of them don't fully line up, some of them do, but it's just an odd little, uh, little observation that I've made. No, you know, no criticism of it at all, but I feel like it's just kind of one of the differences that you see in the way these tire models are scaled so as we go down the list we're in the 31s right now and there is a wide wide selection of tires in the off-road category ranging from like you know below 30 inch tires to above 40 inch tires and they already start to look really beefy even in the 35 inch category but we're gonna keep going up going up going up and still only in 36s. Now we're in 37s, and they're starting to look properly big underneath this truck. Now we're in the 38s, 
And then you actually have a few 39s, which are not something that I would normally expect. By the way, the 39-inch dual boggers look incredible. Absolutely incredible. The XML duels look really good as well. And you'll see there's a surprise that comes later based on those XML duels. So now we're going to actually start scrolling down a little bit faster now. We're into the 41s. We're into the 43s, 44s and 46s now these are the biggest dualies you can fit on this truck and it's the 46 xml duels and we're gonna go ahead and go with these and i think personally that they look incredible on this truck so we're actually gonna go with the power offline winch and then we're gonna go with the engageable lockers and the gooseneck hitch now onto the fender add-ons, you can go with the old school antenna, which does give you 80 repair points if you so choose to go that route. You have the classic side steps, which I'm kind of back and forth on. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't quite as much, but I'll put them on for this particular build. Rear bumper wise, I'm going to put the rear bumper and the drop hitch on. And then interior add-ons, you can actually do a set of rubber floor mats, which are actually really nice as far as an addition goes. Cab lights you can go ahead and put on. Now, the IX Family Pack is basically a set of cards that hang from the rearview mirror with various different people's logos that are in the SnowRunner modding community. And that is not included with this truck, although it is something that I have on right now. But it might not be something that you have in your game at the moment, so I'm not going to use it. Now, tool add-ons, this is where it gets very interesting. You have the chainsaw, the gas cans, and the toolbox, which says, Don't worry about it, from yours truly. Now, exhaust-wise, you have the factory exhaust, and then you have the stack exhaust for the flatbed, or the stack exhaust for the standard bed. Now, I'm going to go with the stack exhaust for the standard bed, but as you'll see a little bit later on, after we put the snorkel on as well, you have the standard box bed and the flatbed. However, it's worth noting that the flatbed is not compatible with the old school side steps, but it does look really, really good when you have the toolbox and the gooseneck hitch back there. So if you're a flatbed fan, I would definitely recommend going that route. But for this build, we're going to stay with the standard box bed. Now we're going to add the dually fenders to the box bed, which actually, as you can see, they really merge well with the side steps as they're designed to do that. And in the front bumper, you have the standard one, and then you have the custom more brush guard style front bumper i'm going to be going with the standard style but that brush guard front bumper is also a really good option should you decide to go that route and as you can see these wheels are the only option for these particular tires but it actually looks like you even have the little actuator for the manual locking hubs there in the front that's even like you know been you know modeled in there that's really really cool now the colors look really really good really vibrant well textured and i love the way they look i really think that this truck does a good job of fitting itself into the look of the game really, really well. You can use this on a campaign map, and I really don't think it looks out of place at all. So definitely mad props to it for that. And you can really, like I said before, go with it in any color you like. They all really look good. Actually, that dark red looks really good. So does the blue. And I might... I'm going back and forth about the blue or the red. I, I really like the bright red on this thing because I feel like it really brings out the depth in that color. But we're going to go ahead and throw beans on the dash. And now we're going to go ahead and take it out of the garage and see what it's like to drive. Now, if you're a fan of older Fords, you're absolutely going to love this thing. And like I said, right there, uh, completely non-branded, completely console friendly. We're going to go ahead and fire it up, see what it sounds like, and see how it drives. It's got that very, very, very cool old school sounding startup. And we're going to go ahead and actually back it into the trailer store and see what we can hook up in terms of trailers. So let's back it up. Just get it a little bit better situated to where it's not, you know, we're not worrying about facing the wall with our trailers. So let's see. Trailer store. You can see we got the red gooseneck pack, like, fully good to go with that. You also have the, well, that's interesting. Fro like, it pings frogs trailers, but... It doesn't necessarily have the necessary hookup for that, so that's an odd thing. Um, the transporter extension does work, though. And what I'm going to actually start off with is the long log gooseneck, and you'll see why. Now, the reason why I'm starting off with the long log gooseneck is because it's a really easy way and quick way for us to get weight behind this thing in a testing environment. So we're going to go to the long logs, and oh, no! Oh, I don't have free the logs on right now. That's a bit frustrating. It's okay. We'll grab a flatbed, and we'll put some weight on it that way. 
But it's one of those things where it's like, if you don't have the free the logs pack, uh, sometimes the log trailers don't work very well. And it's one of those, it's one of those things that like, or at least the auto packing of logs doesn't work very well if you don't have the free the logs mod turned on. So if you do like to auto pack logs, I would definitely recommend going with that mod. But for now, we're going to go ahead and go with Red's six unit gooseneck with the triple axle. So let's get back into the cargo area. And we're going to do some concrete slabs just to really, really pile on the weight. And as you can see, it actually pulled the front axle off the ground for a little bit there. But let's see what this thing looks like on the inside. Now, the inside is really, really cool. And it's not necessarily, you're not seeing it very well right now, I will admit, because the sunlight is not directly, directly shining on it. But once the sun shines on it directly, you can really see that classic, you know, old school blocky Ford interior, blocky Ford dash working gauges for the most part actually you've got your working um your working rpm gauge right there as well which is really nice to see beans just chilling out up there on the dash having a great time working mirrors uh both side view and rear view which is really really nice for those of you that like to play this game on the interior view and if you're going to use the 10-speed transmission i definitely recommend using the engine tune that is paired with it because i was using actually as i record this video Earlier today, I used the 10-speed transmission with the wrong engine tune, and you could really tell that the truck was struggling because of it. But I've got to tell you that using the 10-speed transmission with the correct engine tune is a night and day difference, and if you're planning on using this truck, I definitely recommend using that engine tune. So let's actually get a little bit of a better look at what this thing looks like, and oh my god. Like, when you get a proper trailer behind it, what an incredible looking setup, man. What an incredible looking setup. I mean, especially when you look at it from the side like that. Like, there are very few trucks that really just give you nostalgia and mod quality like this one does. And I know for a fact that, that like, the Ford guys out there, when this thing drops on console, oh my god, they are going to be all over it. So, with that being said, let's hop back into it. And continue to take it down the road and see how it does when you... Whoa! Okay, pointing uphill. It really torqued up and threw the front axle off the ground. Let's see how it does when we put it into the mud with some weight behind it. Because once again, the reason why I'm doing these tests with weight behind the truck is because I personally feel like a lot of people that use this thing are going to use it for hauling because it's really not that much of a trail truck it's not that much of a scout although you can use it as such if you desire but personally for me it's definitely more hauling focused and i would definitely recommend using it in a more hauling focused environment but as we turn off into the mud and put it in high it's not too happy about it low plus with the lockers on is definitely going to be a better place for it and already in the shallow mud i can definitely tell you it's finding some resistance but it's not giving up and that's a big kind of highlight of this truck is that when you get it into tough situations, it may slow down, but it doesn't give up. It doesn't feel like it's going to stop or like stall out on you. It really never gives you any of those vibes. And I think in this sense, it really does always give off that vibe that like no matter how much it slows down, it's always going to keep trying. It's always going to keep going. It's always going to keep trying to put the power down. And it may take a while to get out, but you will get out of whatever bind that you're in. So once again, I definitely think it's realistically tuned in that regard. And I think we're probably going to avoid those mud lanes for now especially with the kind of weight that we have on the back because the performance that i'm seeing in here is good it's really really good and i would probably recommend well you know what all right we'll do the first mud lane uh we'll, we'll do the first mud lane back 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 we're not going to do the second one because i definitely think the second one would be a really bad idea but we'll do the first one rip to that barrel that barrel ain't gonna last very long let's see how she does all right there's low Oh, that barrel had a, like, a little bit of a wild ride there. I, like, flipped over a couple of times. What the heck? This is really impressive. This is very impressive. Going through this mud lane with that weight on the back. I, mad props, dude. Mad props to it. And look, it looks so good doing it. Like, it looks so freaking good doing it. I absolutely love the way this truck looks. Absolutely love the way this truck looks. Now, obviously, it's kind of a matter of personal taste on whether or not you prefer this generation of Ford trucks, and especially if you prefer that particular front end. It's kind of one of those things where, like, people are all about it or they are, like, not about it at all. 
And, you know, for those of you that are all about it, I'm sure y'all are going to love it. And for those of you that aren't necessarily a big fan of this body style, I would still recommend giving this truck a shot because it is a really, really, really good example of what happens when someone spends a really long time on making a truck drive a very specific way. And you can see that in this, you can see that in the Delta pickup, you can see that in a lot of other pickup trucks that were designed to feel like they had a lot of power, a lot of potential, but also feel like they fit into that vanilla game balance and didn't really, you know, uh, throw off a campaign experience too much. Now, granted, some people like a experience where you can just like blast down a road at like 100 miles an hour with a fully loaded trailer and, you know, blast through contracts left and right. Whereas other people prefer a little bit more of a standard game balance focused experience. And I think that this truck is definitely going to be a little bit more for that particular crowd. But that's also not a bad thing at all because I think that this truck does a really, really, really good job of finding a middle ground between both of those approaches. So let's see how it does with a trailer behind it in the dips obstacle. This is probably not a good idea. But with that being said, it seems to be doing a pretty dang good job right off the bat. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yep, I definitely spoke too soon. Trailer legs are stuck. Okay, yep. I think the best move now is going to just be to get myself out of here because that's only going to get worse the further on in the obstacle we get. So I think I'm going to pull the plug on that one real quick. And we're just going to go ahead and drive it right on out of that one. And we'll put it back into high. Well, not even high just yet. We'll put it back in automatic mode. And we'll make our way down to the bridge jump. The bridge jump is going to be where this thing will be. I, would, I shouldn't say at home. But I think with all that weight behind it, it's going to be an absolute blast. Throwing it off of the bridge jump with that much weight behind it and that much force driving it. We're just going to put it in, in, uh, in neutral and let the weight just throw it down the bridge. It's very fast and high. The only problem is it takes a really long time to get going. And that means that you can really only use high on more flat roads. So let's try not to like really, really, really ruin it here. Let's see how long it can stay in high up the hill. I don't know if it's going to be for very long though. It's probably going to be a little sketchy. Oh yeah, definitely not. There you go. Wow. It To get up a grade like this, you need to turn the lockers on on the pavement. That should show you how much this thing is working to haul those three units of concrete slabs. I mean, that's granted, that's a lot of weight behind it, but even then, like, it's like, wow, this thing is working. All right, easy does it up to the edge of the bridge. Or I should say the lip of the bridge. There we go. All right, we're onto the bridge now. There's high range, ninth gear, and neutral. She's picking up speed, she's picking up speed, she's picking up speed, and go! Not even all that far, but, oh, jeez. It didn't jump all that far. And it almost completely damaged out its suspension. It did pop a tire, though. So that would definitely be something we would have to address uh, if we were playing in campaign mode. But as far as the strength test goes, this thing did really, really well off the bridge jump. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.